Sometimes we go through seasons where we are praying about something, we're believing the Lord for something, and we feel like God is not answering us. We're not hearing anything from Him, nor is He answering our prayer. And that's what I want to talk about today is praying without ceasing, uh, remaining consistent in our prayer life and what that looks like, and, and maybe some of the reasons why God does not always answer us in our prayers. I want to start in Matthew chapter 6, where Jesus teaches us how to pray the Lord's Prayer. And He says, And when you pray, you must not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners, that they may be seen by others. Truly, I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your Father who is in secret, and your Father who sees you in secret will reward you. So you hear this term a lot, the secret place, get in the secret place. And this is what people are referring to when they tell you, you need to spend time in the secret place. And what Jesus is describing here, he's not saying that we don't need to pray in public, that praying in public is bad. That is not what he is saying. He's saying that the hypocrites would do this in public in order to look more spiritual in order to look spiritually superior to other people, they would use big words, big phrases to sound smart and really try to impress the people around them. They weren't actually praying to communicate with God. They were trying to be impressive to uh, the, the bystanders and people that were walking around them, listening to them. They would do this loudly on the streets and wail and, and just make a show of the whole thing. So that's what Jesus is talking about here, praying in church and public and praying over your meal. Um, when you're out to eat or any of that. He's not condemning any of that. We should do that. And as believers, we should feel free to pray wherever we need to pray. Let's continue. And when you pray, do not heap up empty phrases as the Gentiles do, for they think that they will be heard for their many words. That's exactly what I was just talking about. They would use big phrases, um, try to use impressive speech. It was more for the people around them than it was for the Lord, because in the previous chapter, he's talking about giving to the needy. Don't let your right hand know what your left hand is doing. Basically saying, we're not doing all this for a show. We're doing this to speak to the Father. He says, do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask of Him. Pray like this, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. So right there, Jesus tells us, step one, acknowledge the sovereignty of God. We acknowledge the name of the Lord. We, not, we acknowledge that Jesus is the name above every name. We're, we're, we're telling him his place and we're acknowledging him as the creator of the universe. We're acknowledging him as the one true, only sovereign God, the way, the truth, and the life. So he's telling us here that we need to acknowledge God and his position and who he is in our life. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And this is where I want to pause for a moment. And this is the part that I believe over time through some um, bad teaching, people have developed a prayer life that is against what the Bible teaches us. He said here to pray, your kingdom come and your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Now, I want to remind you of something else that Jesus prayed in the garden right before he went to the cross. Luke twenty two forty two. he says, Father, if you are willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. So as I was saying, over time and over the last few decades, there's been movements come along. We know them as the word of faith or the prosperity gospel or the name it, claim it crowd who has come along and twisted scripture to make it something that it's not to say, I want this car. I want this house. I want this money. I want these airplanes. I want whatever it is, health, wealth and welfare, you know, all of these things that just say it out loud and claim it. And that has more roots in the new age and pagan movements than it does in the word of God. We know there's scriptures that say that if you delight in the Lord, he will give you the desires of your heart. But we've talked about that before, where that means your will is in alignment with God's will. Again, what we're reading here in Matthew 6, 10, and then that's when those desires come down when we're aligned with his will for our life, not our materialistic desires. And then there's other verses like John chapter 15, where he says, you did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit should abide so that whatever you ask in my name, he may give it to you. See, we drop off the rest of the verse and we just go straight to whatever you ask in my name, it will be done. And many people are led through these uh, deceptive teachings 
teachings over time who are being manipulated for the greed of the speaker. Uh, you know, a pastor in a thousand dollar suit that's telling you, look at my life, name it, claim it. This can be true of yours and then sow a seed. And people are manipulated over time. And although many are aware of these schemes and tactics and these charlatans and these heretics and these people that have come along trying to rob and steal from people, I know that people are waking up to it and moving away from it. But we still take those principles into our own prayer life sometimes without even knowing it. And we're naming and claiming and praying. And we don't really stop and say, not my will, but yours be done. Again, if we look at Luke 22 with Jesus in the garden, he said, Father, if you are willing, remove this cup from me. God, if you're willing, I would love for this outcome to happen in my life. If you're willing, this is what I would like to see. But nevertheless, it's not my will but yours be done. You know, when we're not praying for the will of God to be done and we're treating God like a genie, we're telling him, I want this, I want this now, this is how I want to see it, that's how you should do it. We're expecting, we're telling God what the outcome needs to be as we are praying. And oftentimes God is not going to respond to this prayer. God is not going to answer this prayer because we are trying to control our life. We're trying to control our situation and we have to relinquish that control. The Lord is trying to get us to walk by faith and not by sight and say to me, for example, this last year, Adam, do you trust me? Do you trust that my will, my plans, my ways are higher than yours? My thoughts are higher than yours. Do you understand and do you trust that I'm actually able to take care of you better than you can take care of yourself? Adam, do you know the number of hairs on your head? Because I do. Do you know the thoughts that I have for you? Because I do. So the Lord is trying to get us to trust him in this situation. And I can't imagine how difficult it was for Jesus to pray this, knowing this is the will of God, knowing that the lamb was slain from the foundation of the earth. This was the plan all along. He still said, Father, if you are willing, can this pass for me? But nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. This is so powerful. And this shows that submission to the Father. This shows that humility, that meekness that Jesus had, but he was always submitted to the will of the Father. Let's continue reading in Matthew 6. So this is probably the biggest culprit to unanswered prayers or people are praying against the will of God or praying their own will and they don't even realize it because because of something that they've been taught, something that they've heard, a way scripture has been twisted and they've misunderstood how we should pray. But we got to go back to the basics of what the Bible says and start there. Give us this day our daily bread, our spiritual food, the Bible, our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we have also forgiven our debtors. Or forgive us of our sins, God, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Um, some translations say the evil one, and we also know that some add, for yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen means let it be so. Um, so we're back to that reverence. We're back to that place of reminding God that everything belongs to Him. Everything is His, and He is in control, and He is the ultimate authority of our life. And this is the roadmap for prayer, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, we can add things that are specific to our life. Yes, we should. Should. First Thessalonians chapter 5 says this. It says, Rejoice always, pray without ceasing. You know, this past year, God has done miraculous things in my life, in my family, and in my home. And my prayer life has uh, improved over the last year. You know, I pray twice a day, time that I dedicate in the morning and right before I go to bed, me and my wife pray every single night and we've been doing it for a year. We're going to make some videos about that and how prayer together has changed our relationship and changed our marriage and brought us closer to one another and the Lord. But um, I make time for that. And then when I'm at work or when I'm doing different things, if God drops something in my mind or in my spirit, I'll often pray to him as well. That's what the Bible means here with, with pray without ceasing. We're constantly constantly in that communication with the Lord. Do you have a habit of running to your friend or texting somebody or calling somebody when something goes wrong? Or do you run to the Lord first? I'm not sharing all that to brag. I'm sharing that it's a discipline that was not there in my life that God, the more I did it, 
the more I wanted to do it. And I've seen the faithfulness of God. He's unchanging. He's always faithful, but I've recognized it more as I begin to pray and pray according to his will and not mine. And it, it brings us to a place of surrender. It brings us to a place of submission and saying, okay, Lord, am I praying according to my will? Am I trying to twist your arm into doing what I want you to do? Am I trying to manipulate you, God, and tell you what to do? Or am I actually coming before you in submission saying, not my will, but yours be done because I trust you? Because what it comes down to, ladies and gentlemen, is a lack of faith. Uh, uh, It's unbelief that God's not actually good and that God doesn't actually have you when we try to manipulate certain situations. And I don't mean this in a like an evil way. I don't mean this as if we're doing this in a sinister way. I mean this as if we're doing it in ignorance and we're praying and telling God what to do because it's a lack of faith and belief that he's good and that he's got you and he's got this. He is faithful. He who promised is faithful and he says he will never leave us nor forsake us. Well, I want to encourage you to set some time aside every day to get in that secret place. Shut the door and pray and spend time with the Lord. It says if we pray in secret, he rewards us openly. And the last thing I'll leave you with is are your prayers only focused on you? Are you only praying about you and what you need and what um, you want to see in your own life? Or are you interceding and praying for others? This is really important. This is something that God has been putting on my heart. I spend time praying, asking God to search my heart, humble me. You know, Holy Spirit, illuminate your word, write it on my mind and heart. I pray these things every single day, but then the Lord started to convict me. Okay. Now it's time to start praying for some other people. Now it's time to start spending some time interceding for my body, interceding for the church, interceding for friends and family and certain situations that are going on. So look at where your prayers are focused. Are they always inward or are you praying for other people as well? Because God will bless you in doing that. And there's a lot that um, there's a lot more to that, but I'll leave it there. And there's things that God will unlock in your life if you begin to shift your focus off of yourself and everything that you've got going on and you're dealing with. I'm not telling you to ignore yourself. We definitely pray for yourself, but also make some time to pray for other people. If you have to divide it up in different prayer times, so be it, whatever you have to do. Uh, Or if somebody texts you or they call you and they're going through something, just stop, take 30 seconds and just pray for them and and just pray the will of God be done in their life. Because what we don't wanna do is tell everybody else to pray for us, ask everybody else to pray for us, but we're not actually spending the time in prayer ourselves. So that's really important. That's something that I know I've done a lot in the past. I've had to repent. You know, I tell people I'm going to pray for them. I never pray for them or I ask people for prayer, but I'm not praying myself. So I want to encourage you to spend that time in prayer. Um, I believe the Holy Spirit will encounter you. I believe that through this time with the Lord, he will begin to teach you his word in new ways. The Holy Spirit will begin to answer these prayers. God will answer these prayers as we begin to line up our will with his will. We need to know the word of God read it, pray it, pray scripture, pray out the will of God, remind God of his promises. And then we always have to leave it with, but not my will, but yours be done. So I hope this encouraged somebody today. I hope this will, it's a good reminder on prayer and just how we should be praying. There's so many teachings out there on prayer, I know, and and you can go really far deep into this topic, but I just wanted to throw this out there and remind you, if you're not seeing God answer your prayers, or if you feel like your prayers are bouncing off the wall, then, you know, maybe look at some of these things and see if there's some areas you can improve and if you need to adjust your prayers or your focus. But anyway, thank you so much for watching. If you're not subscribed, I would appreciate it and like the video so it gets out to more people. If you're still here, uh, comment. Let's pray. Um, Anyways, I'll catch you in the next one.